In the previous video, we had a high level overview of what OAuth Open Authorization is, how it works and how it allows you to set up user sign up and logging in on your application with popular services like Facebook, Google and GitHub. And in this video, we will look at a basic implementation. I will show you how to implement GitHub signing in to a simple PHP website without depending on any libraries. So here I have created a protected page which is only accessible if the user is authenticated with GitHub and authorized our application. The login page shows a button which takes the user to the GitHub authentication page. If authentication is successful, user can access the protected page which displays the user's profile picture and the name. To implement OAuth, we need to register our application with GitHub and for that go to the settings page on your GitHub account. Scroll down and there you will see a section called developer settings on the left side menu. Within developer settings you have two options, GitHub apps and OAuth apps. Both works but in our case we need to read a user's profile information only. So OAuth app is all that we need. On the other hand, GitHub app allows more fine-grained control like if you want to access or modify a user's code repository. Okay, click new OAuth app, then enter an application name. This name identifies your application to users on the authorization screens. For instance, I will name it as CR test. Next, provide the homepage URL, in this case the localhost address. Then enter the authorization callback URL. This is the URL to which GitHub redirects the user after authorization along with the authorization code. Or else if there is an error or if the user denied access, then that error message will also be sent to the callback URL. Register the application and you will be redirected to the application settings page. Here you will find your client ID. In addition to that, we also need to generate a client secret. GitHub may prompt you for the password, enter it and you will receive the client secret. The secret will be displayed only once, so make sure to copy it and store securely. If you refresh the page, it will no longer be shown and you will need to regenerate a new secret. Never store the secrets in your application code, instead store it in an environment file, then add it to the git ignore file. So create a file called .env, then add the client secret and the client ID within that. Then add the .env file to the .gitignore file. If you haven't initiated a git repository yet, do so. Create a .gitignore file and include the .env file. You can also consider adding the vendor directory where PHP Composer installs all the dependencies. So we don't want to add both .env file and vendor directory to the git repo. With the credentials secured in the environment file, Proceed to create the necessary pages, starting with the sign-in page, then the callback URL page and a protected page. The protected page is accessible only after successful authentication. Let's put together the sign-in page as a simple HTML page titled sign-in with GitHub. And by the way, I'm going to add the bootstrap CSS link to style the page. Okay, the page contains nothing much, just a hyperlink that points the user to the GitHub authentication page. I will show you how to do that. So add an anchor tag. Let's set it as a button, a bootstrap button. The link says sign in with GitHub. Then we need to fill up the href attribute. To find the URL, let's take a look at the GitHub documentation. This page, authenticate with an OAuth app. There within the code blog you can find the URL. It looks like github.com slash login slash OAuth slash authorized. Paste it here but in addition to that we also want to add our GitHub client ID as a query parameter. 
To access the environment variables in our PHP code, we need to install a package called php.env from Composer. So performing a Composer search command, Composer search php.env. Here are the results. I am going to install the first one. Composer require v lucas slash php.env. The package will be installed inside the vendor directory. Yeah, the installation is successful. Now we are ready to use the environment variables within our PHP code. So going back to the signin.php file, at the top of the file, we want to load the php.env package. So first of all, include the vendor autoload.php file that will load all the composer dependency classes then import the dot env namespace at the top use dot env backslash dot env that's the namespace dot env uses now let's call the static function create immutable and pass the current directory path then call the load function which loads all the environment variables now we are ready to access all the environment variables i mean any of the environment variable defined within the dot env file by referring the super global env variable so we can echo env followed by client id github client id okay now let's take a look at the sign in page to check if it's working or not go to the browser and load localhost auth github sign in dot php yeah here is the login button the link is also working you can also see the client id as a query parameter but in addition to that we also want to add another query parameter called scope scope defines the level of permission we are requesting to github in our case we only need to read a user's profile image name and maybe the account id so scope equals user colon read that's the scope string to know more about scope variables you can check the github documentation okay let me also add a github icon to the sign in button for that i am gonna get an icon from bootstrap icons website searching for github here is the icon I am going to use. Let me copy the SVG code and paste it within the hyperlink tag. Okay, let's take a look at the page. Refresh and yeah, now the button looks more meaningful to the user. If I click the link, it takes me to the GitHub authentication and authorization page. I was already logged into my account, otherwise you will see a login page first, followed by this authorization page. Here GitHub is asking whether you trust the app or not, that is the app we just created. If the user authorizes the app, GitHub, GitHub will redirect the user back to the callback URL we have set up during the setup phase, along with the authorization code. So within the callback.php file, we want to handle the response received from github so let's take a look at the documentation page once again the code will be sent as a url query parameter it's a temporary code as soon as you get it you need to exchange it for an access token there are also sdks available for various programming languages like go javascript PHP etc. In real cases you might want to use one of these SDKs but for our use case we will just use simple HTTP requests from PHP. PHP does have built-in curl functions but we are going to use a package called Guzzle HTTP as it gives a better interface to send requests and receive responses. So again Taking the help of Composer, Composer search Guzzle HTTP. But it looks like Guzzle is abandoned. So let me instead search again for just Guzzle. Composer search Guzzle. And yeah, here is the one we want to install Guzzle HTTP slash Guzzle. So Composer require Guzzle HTTP 
slash gazelle that will also be installed inside the vendor directory okay the installation is complete now within our callback file import the gazelle http namespaces the http client as well as the gazelle http request exception this is required to handle errors request exception is required to handle errors then load the dependencies next we need to define a function called exchange code the purpose of this function is to send the authorization code in exchange for an access token the function has two arguments the data and the api url within the function check if the received url parameter includes either the authorization code or an error error can occur if the user doesn't authorize successfully that means if either the code is absent or if there is an error something has gone wrong and we couldn't receive an authorization code successfully from github so echo some error occurred and exit the script otherwise access the code from the url parameter and save it to the variable auth code now we have the code next to exchange it we need to access the environment variables so load them from the .env file using the .env package let's see what github is sending back just output the get variable to see its contents okay click authorize on the github authorization page and it redirects me back to the callback page along with the code as a url parameter so our site is able to successfully receive the code from github next we need to exchange this code for an access token for that we can send a request to another github endpoint again php has built in curl functions but in my experience they are a little verbose so let's use the package gazelle to send the requests before we can send the request we need to prepare the data the data must include the client id the secret key and the code we have just received access both the client id and the secret from the environment variable then add the authorization code okay that's the data we want to send next we need to set the request url the github url that returns an access token is login auth access token the details are already given in this documentation i am just re-implementing it in php so the url checks if the auth code is valid or not if it is valid github will respond with an access token so variable token data equals calling the function exchange code and passing the data and the api url now we can define the function exchange code first initiate the gazelle http client then perform the request within a try catch block it helps us to catch errors if any catch request exception variable e this needs to be an http post request so call the post method and pass the url along with the data and the required headers the data should be sent as form data so we can use the form params property available with gazelle form params equals data followed by the request headers set the accept property to application json because we prefer to receive the response in json format so that's our post request now check if the response status code is 200 okay or not if it is 200 the request was successful and we will decode the response body and return it 
we will decode the json string into an object otherwise if the response is not 200 return false also within the catch block which catches any php exceptions return false so that's our function exchange code in real use cases you might need to perform more robust error handling but for this simple example i hope it is enough then down below we have already called the function exchange code and assigned it to the variable token data check if token data is false or not if it is false exit with the message error getting token that means something went wrong with the request otherwise if token data is not false but has an error property it means the request was successful but github responded with an error code instead of an access token this can happen if we send the incorrect authorization code or if the authorization code expired despite the http response code being 200 that means the response is 200 okay but the code verification failed otherwise if there is no error token data will contain a valid access token let's see how it looks like reload the callback.php page and yeah the response contains an access token property token type property and a scope property don't know why the scope string is empty anyway now this access token is what we use to authenticate the user whenever they try to access our application so we can store this access token in the user's browser as an http only cookie for subsequent visits the browser sends this cookie to our application and our application can validate the cookie by sending a request to github meanwhile if i try to reuse the auth code again the response becomes bad verification code because the authorization code was for one time use only so in order to get another access token i need to sign in again i mean the user need to sign in again this time there was no authorization step because the same client is requesting again so github knows it and had already added our app to the user's account by the way here i am allowing access to my own app but it works for any user continuing on that if the token data contains a valid access token store it in the user's browser as a cookie you can use the php built-in function set cookie name the cookie as something like github access token followed by the value of the cookie then also set an expiration time i am setting the expiration to 30 days so the value becomes something like this okay after that the cookie expires from the user's browser add the other arguments as well here the most important thing is the last argument which is boolean true it makes the cookie an http only cookie we are setting it as an http only cookie because http cookies are only accessible via http javascript will not be able to access it preventing it from cross site scripting attacks after setting the cookie redirect the user to the protected.php page and exit the script so let's see how the cookie works let me try to sign in again yeah you can see that under the application tab the cookie is set along with the expiration time and the http only option and i was redirected back to the protected page and on this page protected.php we need to validate the access token and fetch the user's details from the github api github will respond with the user's details only if the access token is valid so we will get the access token from the cookie then send it along as an http request to the github users endpoint just like we did on the previous page so start by importing the gazelle http client and the request exception namespaces also the dot env namespace then load the environment variables 
Next, we need to define a function to fetch the user's details from the GitHub API. So function get user. Below that, let's call the function get user and assign it to a variable called user. Let me also initiate the variable user with boolean false. Now comes the HTML part where we display the details. The title says protected page. Also, let me add the CSS file. Then within the content area, we want to display the user's name and the profile picture. If the validation is successful and GitHub returns the user's details. Otherwise, if the access token is invalid or if there is no cookie present, that means the user is not authenticated. In that case, we will display an alert box. So if the user variable is not empty, display the details. Otherwise, display an alert box saying authentication required. Let's also add a button that directs the user to the login page. That is signin.php. So if the user variable has some value, we can display the details. Currently the page is saying authentication required along with the sign in button because we haven't yet fetched the user's details from the GitHub API. So let's fetch the details within the get user function. First of all, check if the access token is present within the cookie or not. We had named the cookie as CR GitHub access token. If it is not present, the function returns false. Otherwise, we will continue with the request. Let me find out the URL to which I want to send the request. It looks like api.github.com slash user. There is another endpoint called slash emails which allows accessing a user's private emails. But here we want to fetch only the user's basic details like name and image. So slash user is the endpoint we are requesting to. Initiate the HTTP client and send the request. The documentation tells us to send an HTTP GET request along with the key value pairs. On this page, it shows us how to send a GET request with a query parameter. But when I searched more about it, the recommended way is to send the access token as an authorization bearer token instead of a URL query parameter. Since it's a GET request, the access token will be appended to URL if we send it as a query parameter, which is insecure because URLs can end up in log files, which can expose the access token. That's why we are sending it as an authorization bearer token so that it will be hidden from plain sight. So within the headers array, set authorization bearer followed by the cookie value. Also set the accept value to application JSON. So that's our request. If the response code received from GitHub is 200, then we will return the response body contents which should contain the user's details. Otherwise, the function returns false. Again, if there is an exception, then also return false. Let's see how the response data looks like. Reloading the page, protected.php, which sends the request along with the cookie. And you can see that the response is a JSON encoded string. So we can decode it into a PHP object. Wrap it inside JSON decode. Refresh again. And yeah, here are the properties. 
out of these we want the users avatar image url as well as the name so coming down to the if php if end if condition add an image tag let's make it rounded then set the images src attribute to the avatar image url Also don't forget to escape the output using html special characters function. This makes our code safe from xss attacks. Also below that within an h1 heading tag output the string welcome followed by the name of the user. Okay, let's see if it works or not. Reload the page. and yeah the image and the name are showing up correctly here is the image fetched from github now suppose i delete the cookie and try to reload the page that gets me logged out sign in again and i will get a new access token so that's how signing with github oauth works Hope the video helped. Thanks for watching.